So what I'd like to talk about today is how to brew uh, sort of the ultimate cup of coffee. Well, my name is Tamis Crisman, and I am the founder and um, president of Dragonfly Coffee Roasters. Uh, my history is that I've been passionate about coffee my entire life. Uh, I've actually been roasting coffee since I was eight years old. My uh, formal background is in chemical engineering and computer science. Um, so for me, it's been in part a lot of chemistry and artistry and kind of combining them to uh, yield what I think is an exceptional cup of coffee. There's all sorts of different ways to, to make the perfect cup of coffee. And uh, with that, we have to factor in how we're going to grind our coffee because the coffee will be ground uh, sort of tailored to each individual extraction to optimize the desirable flavor and minimize the undesirable characteristics. Starting with our French press, uh, that is of a style of brewing that's known as steeping. So basically, uh, we have coffee that's in constant contact with water, so we have to be more careful with over extraction. All right, so with uh, the, the French press, the ratio of coffee to water we want to use is uh, for the standard one liter uh, French press, uh, we want to add about an inch or two and a half to three ounces of coarsely ground coffee. Uh, with the French press, you always want to lean to more coffee because of the grounds um, than less coffee. Uh, so the ideal ratio is going to be around two ounces of ground coffee, uh, coarsely ground, to the one liter of water. So essentially, we want to let the coffee bloom for between 30 seconds to a minute, um, and you know, slowly, in, slowly infuse the water into the grounds, and saturating all the grounds. And what we see here is the interaction of CO2 and water. As the water starts to absorb into the coffee ground, the CO2 that's coming out of the coffee from the roasting process interacts and makes it bubble. So now that we've allowed the grounds to bloom, uh, as we start to bring in more water, we'll see that the color changes and that the crust kind of expands. You see a lot of the residual CO2 start to boil, to bubble out, to sort of push up. Uh, this is a great time to get your nose down in there. Allow it to extract for a total of about eight to nine minutes and then slowly uh, plunge down. So ultimately it shouldn't be hard to press down. If the saturation level of the water and the grinds is, is accurate, then you should be able to just slowly depress the plunger um, without a lot of resistance. So once you're you know, fully plunged, it's, uh, it's ready to pour. Excellent. So now uh, let's talk a little bit about how to make an exceptional cup of coffee using a standard single cup pour over. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite ways to make coffee. This is how I make coffee every day in the morning. With a pour over, it's a totally different extraction method than the French press. With the French press, we had the water and the coffee hanging out together and extracting. The, the grind was coarse. So what we want to do here is we have our, our cup and our standard Melita dry filter, it's just recycled unbleached filter, and you'll see it's a little moist. What, we, what I like to do is that once I get the filter placed in the, in the pour over, I will do a, a quick uh, little purge of the filter. So I sort of pre-wet the filter, and that just dampens it, sets it up against the side of the, of the ceramic, but then also pushes any particulate of dust or you know any kind of flavor that may be in there is, is usually washed out with that. So once we have our, our filter pre-wet, uh, then for a 12 ounce pour, I use three scoops, which these scoops are one tablespoon, so that's 21 grams. All right, so once we've reached boiling, we're gonna let the water come slightly off the boil just for a few seconds, so then it gets to be you know, 201, 202. So we wanna essentially just let a little bit of water incorporate with the coffee, allow it to bloom, interact it with the CO2. Um, this coffee was roasted yesterday, so there's a lot more aggressive blooming and interaction with the CO2 than that of if we let this um, sit. Now, water temperature is also a very important factor when it comes to whether it be a French press or pour over. Uh, we want optimally somewhere our water to be with in the range of 198 to 202 Fahrenheit. I find that the best temperature is right at about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So once we've established a good bloom, we just slowly and consistently agitate the coffee. As long as there's a constant flow of motion uh, in the coffee, 
then you're good to go. If you let it sit for too long, what will happen is that there will be a damming at the bottom of the pour, pour over of, sediment, of sedimentation of the coffee. That's going to slow the time that it's taking for the water to drain out of the base of the filter, and that's going to increase the extraction, thus leading to it being over-extracted cup. So what we're looking at right here is the, the actual diameter of the stream coming out as we're finishing the pour over should, should be throughout the duration of the pour somewhere between a spaghetti noodle and, and linguine. If it starts to just drip, 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 that means that you're getting damming in the basin of the, of the pour over and you're going to end up over extracting the coffee. Um, so really we want a nice steady stream all the way through uh, and then once it's finished pouring we should have a, have a really nice cup. I'm Tamas Chrisman with Dragonfly Coffee Roasters and want to thank you for watching my brewing guide uh, sort of to the exceptional cup of coffee. Uh, remember, coffee is the most complex beverage that we consume on a day-to-day -day basis. It has over 850 chemical compounds that comprise the aroma and the flavor. So there is no right or wrong answer to how you brew your coffee. I encourage you to experiment, take something that you've learned today, and turn your next morning cup into an exceptional experience.